Welcome to Island Baptist Church. Today's sermon by Pastor Greg Judd is in Mark 14, Fear Doesn't Win, Part 2. I gave you some internet quotes last, last week. I'm going to give you a few of the rest of them this week about fear. Uh, I don't endorse them necessarily. I got some of them I kind of agree with, some halfway, some maybe not. But anyway, here's some more internet, internet ideas on fear. If you have fear, here's what the internet, some of the top hits, what they say. Um, There we go. A little slow on action. There we go. With complete faith, there is no fear of what faces you in life or death. Hmm? Maybe, maybe not. People living deeply have no fear of death. Maybe, maybe not. Fear does not prevent death. It prevents life. Okay. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Uh, no fear, no limits, no excuses. Again, there's a power through mentality. Just fear, I'm just going to run over it like a truck. And then uh, fear is the enemy of success. I think that's probably at least partially true. And then this saying, let your faith be bigger than your fear. Well, today we're going to talk about faith and fear, but we're going to recap what we did last week first because they, it, it all works together. Um, last week we spoke about fear and love and how they correlate with each other. And just to recap a few of those ideas, here's some couple of verses from Proverbs. Um, fear of the Lord is the fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. So we, we talked about the reverence, the, the righteous, the, the good type of fear, not crush you like a bug fear, but a God is all powerful fear, but He loves me fear and, and understanding. And that is the beginning of wisdom, a beginning of knowledge, and it turns us away from doing dumb things and, and death both here and e- eternally if we follow in God's ways. And then Proverbs 29, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, something that will trap you. But whoever trusts, whoever has faith in the Lord is kept safe. And so we find love here is, is part, of, part of the action, part of the action. We can't fear man, but in love... Uh, we move forward and we can overcome fear. There's no fear in love. Or, excuse me, yeah, there's, there's no fear in love, but perfect love pushes out fear. So love's a big factor in, in overcoming our fear of man, fear of the world, fear of, of what is to come. And then Jesus talked about love coming not, that down not only to us as we bask in His glory, but by all men you'll know that my disciples, if you love one another so that love has to be complete it has to be coming down from god we understand it we are actively pushing love out to other people and when we do that we become less and less fearful and this is how we know that we love that we love the children of god by loving god and carrying out his commands and so we we become obedient to god and love is part of what pushes out fear and we talked about that last week and I hope that, uh, hope that you're grasping that and you're practicing that. But today we're going to talk about how fear and faith interact as well as love. So you, it's not like you choose faith or love. You choose them both. But we're going to focus, you can only focus on one at a time. So we're going to talk about fear and faith this morning. And it's our response to trouble that, uh, that, that gets us in trouble sometimes. There are fearful things out there, the things that make us afraid, and then we respond improperly. And if you're like me, something different. I, I, like, I, I like the same. I like sameness in my life. The older I get, the more I like sameness. My mom and dad used to say, no news is good news. And I, as a kid, it's like, what's that mean? Like, you don't get a newspaper? Is that what it is? I didn't understand. But no news is good news, meaning everything's working, nothing's broken down. Uh, people aren't mad at me, ready to kill me, or anything of that nature. I, but when trouble comes up, or potential trouble comes on the horizon, my natural response is, oh no. Here we go again. Poor is me, woe is me. I, I easily get there from life is really good, Jesus me, we're great, to oh no, it looks bad. And the, the perceived trouble, or the potential trouble, trouble, or the worries of trouble that's not really coming, but I think it is get me in trouble, and they take my, my focus off of God and my, put my focus onto me. And believers and unbelievers many times act the same way when it comes to troubles in their lives, and it's, it's very sad. We should, be, we should be better than that. Our response to trouble should be different, and we're going to look at that in the Scriptures today. But circumstances are frightening sometimes. 
bad times, difficult news, and devastating events are coming your way, you're in the middle of them right now, or you just got through them. That is, that is life. And Jesus told us that we would have troubles. It's not like the Christian life is a trouble-free walk in the park. Jesus said, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. So don't think that walking with Christ is just avoiding trouble. We avoid some trouble by our, our obedience, but we don't avoid all trouble even if we do everything right. We will have trouble. And as believers, again, our response should be different from the world because our understanding is different from the world. We understand that when trouble comes, if we take a spiritual look at it, that it's not just the people and the things going on, but there's a greater thing at work. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not about people and the things they do and and what that brings on us, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our battle with trouble that brings on fear is not with what brings it, it's how we respond to it. And our response should be different. We should be able to respond with courage, with steadiness, and a resolve to obey. For the world, fear is like a natural phenomenon, and and they don't They don't like it any better than we do. They want to overcome it. But for the believer, it is a spiritual battle. And if we look at at our response to trouble, the first thing we want to look at today is Jesus' response to trouble. Jesus experienced trouble, and, uh, and for good reason. First of all, we look here at John chapter 12. And Jesus is just getting ready to go to the cross. He under, he, he's understood for all time that that was his purpose. He was coming to go to the cross, but not too excited about the pain and the beatings and the, the, the nails and, and the ridicule. Although I think the ridicule was probably less of a worry, a problem for him than the physical part that he they knew he was going to have to endure. Just, per, just a little conjecture there. But he says this, he says, My heart is troubled, but what shall, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. And many times when you and I get in trouble, we go, Oh, God, save me from this trouble. But we need to pray like Jesus prayed. If it can pass from me, that'd be great, God. But if not, I'm willing to go through any trouble, any difficulty for your sake. And his response, obviously, is the golden response. It's the right response. So Jesus said, my heart is troubled. It's not that Jesus never had any trouble or never had heaviness of the heart. He did. And then... He had these great 12 great followers, or, or maybe he had 11 great followers because he was troubled again. Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified. He said, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. There's not much trouble or, more, or things that are more difficult or, or feel more like a knife to the heart when somebody you know and love and trust turns on you and they just... They just desert you or they leave you holding the bag or whatever. But Jesus had that experience, but how did he respond? He responded correctly. It's not wrong to have an initial emotional response, but it is very wrong for us to let that emotional response control what we do uh, after we come in contact with trouble in our lives. Scriptures teach us that we can be overcomers. Here's a couple of examples. We can rejoice in distress. The Lord says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice when? Always, every circumstance. We can be calm in chaos. The peace of God which transcends your understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Big problem, sometimes little response from you. Other times little problem, big response. But the peace of God can help us overcome those things. We can be courageous when we're frightened. It says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, and be strong. We're going to learn from the disciples. Last week we looked at Peter's uh, Peter's denial of Christ right before the crucifixion, or actually during the, the the days and hours that led up to it. And we're going to step back in time a little bit, and we're going to look at at Jesus speaking with the disciples just a little bit before that. So if you have your Bibles and you want to read along, we're going to take most of these points from John chapter 14. John chapter 14. So we have love pushes out fear, and we have faith that is part of the remedy 
to your fear. And we're going to see how Jesus <clears throat> sets that up here in John chapter 14. Let's read it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And so Jesus was about to die. He's getting ready to leave His disciples. He's leaving those He led. He's leaving those He loved. And what He says to them, he's, after He tells them, Hey guys, end of the train. Party's over. I'm getting ready to die. They, they don't like it. And they are troubled. So we're going to break this apart a little bit verse by verse. In verse 1 it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now we understand we can understand the disciples' disappointment with this. Perhaps um, it's not what I wanted. Another oh no moment. We this is not how we thought it was going to going to be. And if I was there, I can't speak for the disciples, but it would be this is not how I planned it. I didn't give up everything I had to follow Jesus for three years so that he could just pull the rug out from under me and go, hey guys, time's up, and not know what was next. The disciples must have thought, how, this is not what we signed up for. And sometimes with the Lord, maybe you feel the same way. This is not what I signed up for. But here's the thing. If Jesus is who He said He was, He's God in the flesh. He's the Creator of all things. He gave His life to take away your sins. He came back to life. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. Then you did sign up for that. Whatever He has is what you signed up for. At some point during your process of putting your faith in Him, we had some understanding that He's something very special and that whatever He wants is going to be best. And so there is really a point, if you call Him Lord, Boss, and Master, there's an element of whoever, whenever, whatever you got, God, give it to me because I'm, I'm on board with it. Now, I'm not saying it always comes natural and easy. But at some point, we go from what I want to what He wants. And the disciples were troubled. And Jesus wasn't telling His disciples here, um, quick, don't let your hearts be troubled, because guess what? They were already troubled. He was saying, stop letting your hearts be troubled. You're troubled about that? Don't be troubled about that. And in all the, all the times of telling someone, don't be troubled about that, how well does that work? Oh, honey, don't be troubled about that. Well, thanks for saying that. I just feel better about it now. Don't be afraid. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, but with this response, when Jesus says, don't be troubled, He also implies there's a responsibility because He's not going to ask you or tell you to do something you're unable to do. And the good news is that... Um, we don't have to give in to our fears. And you don't have to give yourself permission to be controlled by your fears because Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Your fears might be of what, will, what might happen in the future. And Jesus says to you, don't let your hearts be troubled. And your fear might be, oh no, I thought this was going to happen. Now it looks like it'll never happen for me. Oh no. And Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Stop being troubled. But he doesn't stop there. The rest of the passage gives the how. Don't let your hearts be troubled, and here's how not to be troubled. So he doesn't leave us just with this idea and say, no, we've got to do the best we can. No, he breaks it down for us, and he gives us a direction. Another quote from the Internet, wake up every day stronger than yesterday. Face your fears and wipe your tears. It sounds like, but it doesn't tell you how, does it? Well, fortunately, in God's great wisdom, he gave us good reasons not to be troubled and He gave us the way to not be troubled. He offers the remedy, continuing on in verse 1. Jesus says, don't be troubled, which is the beginning of this whole paragraph. Don't be troubled, but trust in God, trust in me. Don't be troubled, trust my character. I'm who I said I am. You trust God, I'm God also. Don't be troubled, replace that with faith. 
So we, last week we talked about how love needs to be a part of pushing fear out and then faith has to be part of replacing the fear that we have. You know me, you know God, and you cannot be troubled because of that. And then he all goes on in verse 2, in my Father's house are many rooms. He says, don't be troubled. Keep eternity in your view. Keep forever in your sights. What happens in our spiritual walk is that when we walk with our head up and we, we see what God's doing around us and we, we purposely take note on what's going on and the end goal, heaven, spending time with Him, the promises of, of, of that beautiful, perfect place, we typically do lots better on the fear department. But when we begin to let heaven get out of our view and, and the things in the future and we look only one step ahead, and it's dark in that one step, we, we end up becoming terrified because we don't keep heaven in view. And Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. Look, look forward to what's happening next. And He says, don't be troubled. Trust my word. If I told, if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus says, I'm not a liar. Revisit what I said. Nod your head this way instead of, oh no. Say, okay. Don't be troubled. Trust my word. He's not a liar. He's not a deceiver. And then he goes on to say, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus was on task. He was doing what he was supposed to do. And sometimes life intersects us all and we think, oh, this is, this is a, and it's a beautiful moment where we serve God together. We love each other. We have this special community, this special bond. And we think, you know, that that is it. Many times in our lives, the intersections that we have with other people, they're beautiful and they're wonderful. But they're not the end game. They're not the end all. We're moving through that beautiful season onto something else, and that's what happened with Jesus and His disciples. It was a beautiful season, but that season was up. Don't be troubled. Trust my purpose. i got a plan. There's a reason I have to do this. No, you don't like it, and I get that. And honestly, from what we read, Jesus wasn't all that crazy about what was coming next either, right? But don't be troubled. Trust my purpose. There's a bigger plan. Enjoy those intersections. But, but don't get those confused with the promised land. We go on to verse 3 and we learn a few more little things about, about the, the remedy for this fear, this troubling fear. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back. He's saying... Don't be troubled. Everything, all this is temporary. I mean, it's going to be painful. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but it's temporary. Again, bigger picture in, my, in mind. And he also says, don't be troubled. I'm coming back. I'm going away. I'm going to get my work done there. The preparation that I'm preparing for is going to be awesome. And when I come back and get you, when I come back and get you, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. In Matthew, I read this passage and I thought it just applied here so well. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. It's fear of man. A fear of, of what the world's going to do to us that, that, that immobilizes us and paralyzes us from being what we want to be. We need to have a proper fear of God but not of circumstances, not of troubles, not of hardships, and not of man. And Jesus just showed us some of those ways to do that. And he continues on with a couple other verses in that passage. Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I am going. Don't be troubled because you know the way. Follow the path I laid out for you. It's clear. You've got to stay in my word. You've got to remember what I said. You've got to be obedient. And then in verse 6, we didn't read that yet, but it says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's one Savior, there's one God, and Jesus says, I'm it. And I'm going to do the task that will not only make a way for you, but to make a way for all mankind to come to know the great salvation in heaven. So the world says believe in yourself, but really our, it's a misplaced faith. Our faith needs to be in God. Sure, self-confidence is not a bad thing as long as it doesn't go into arrogance, but self-confidence will never get you past fear, but Faith in God will do exactly that. You can't control your circumstances, but you can, according to God's word, control your response to it. 
And one of the things you have to do is this other internet thing I found here is please do not feed the fears. We tend to sit, sit at the table and, and munch all these things that just rile up the fears and you, you know what they are, right? If you just leave that stuff alone and you focus on God's love and let it fill you and get you busy loving people in service and you put your faith in God and you keep your mind on the, the eternal things, those fears can subside and go away. So do not feed your fears. In this world you will have trouble, but Jesus says take heart because I have overcome the world. The world does not have to uh, control you. You have an option. Don't be surprised when things get tough. Jesus was never blindsided by, by their, their trouble or by His own. And faith is not a one-time deal when it comes to fear. Oh, I had this fear, I let my faith rise up, and now I never have that problem again. Um, there might be, a time, might be a day when you have complete, completely conquered something, but most of the time it's going to be continued faith in God, con continually reminding yourself that, that God is there with you. These troubling events that, that the disciples had, they prepared them. You know that they went on to uh, share the gospel in many countries, and most of them died horrible deaths, according to history at least, uh, standing up for the name of Jesus when they were all ready to run at this point in their lives. So these, these troubling times have purpose for them, had purpose for them, and your troubles have purpose for you. God is using your troubles. He doesn't waste a hurt. He doesn't, doesn't let those troubles come in and just be for nothing but we can learn and we can grow and we learn to overcome our fears then we can change the world the same way that the disciples did it's all about putting it into practice another internet meme that i found above all don't fear difficult moments the best comes from them perhaps it does maybe not always but the best comes from hard times peter's greatest denial empowered him looking back at that to say i'm going to stand up for jesus and he went on to do great things and suffer great afflictions but he had a failure so what he picked up he went on and did great things suppose you didn't have any trouble wouldn't that be great well there's a place called heaven and that's when you're going to that's when that's going to happen for you just don't get any illusion that you're going to get get anything like that before heaven but just imagine you didn't have any trouble how much of an influence would you be on other people for Christ? Wow, that, that Greg, look, everything good happens to him. Everything he touches uh, in, in business turns to gold. Uh, every relationship is just wonderful. People, people love him, and they were saying all this about you, right? And all these good things happen, and no bad things ever happen to them. And then you're going to tell them about Christ and his suffering, and you're going to say, come to Jesus, and they're going to go, well, if my life was like yours, I might consider it, but that's not my life man i got all these heartaches and and difficult people and hard family members and i've got all these things and you just floating through you know if i get jesus will i get that well no you're not going to be much of an influ influence but our scars our spiritual scars the things we go through are a light that's where the light shines through One, my favorite band is, is a little band called switchfoot and they wrote a song called the wound is where the light shines through it's not a biblical concept but in a, in a in in a way it correlates i think very well so if i'm this if i'm this person that has a perfect life and i never go through difficulties and and my the, all the light of god is living inside of me but there are no cracks nobody sees god they just see my perfect life but what happens is when i, I go through difficulties then people start saying man how does he do that they look at your life and they say, how does she do that? How can she be so joyful when this horrible thing's happening in her family? These painful things are happening. This, this huge setbacks and still they find joy and peace. And that's where the light shines through. A couple lyrics from the, from the song. Your scars shine like dark stars. And dark stars do shine, all right? They're not just, they shine. Your wounds are where the light shines through. They don't shine through your moments of perfection, your moments of goodness. Oh, oh he's so good, was so good at that. They shine when you go through hard things and other people see that. More lyrics from the same song. The wound is where the light shines through and the wound is where the light finds you. Your faith came from somebody who was flawed and imperfect and had difficulties and they modeled Jesus in, in spite of some bad things that happened in their lives. 
And you receive the light through the imperfections and the scars of other people. And other people will find the light through you. God's desire for you and my desire for you and for myself also is to be so full of the light. And I want to see your light shining brighter than your pain. We all have trouble. Much of our trouble starts when we let fear control us and it overwhelms us and it turns us into people who are not on purpose. We are not on mission for God. But when we overcome our fear and when we walk in faith, we live in love love, and we are hopeful in our troubles, that's when we live out God's purpose. Fear negates the victory sometimes, but it doesn't have to. His light shines through us as we endeavor and continue to overcome the fear in our lives. Is fear gripping you today? Jesus says, don't be troubled. Let's pray. God, we all find ourselves fearful from time to time, different things going on in our lives, and we pray that during our moments of silence here a little bit of music and introspection that you will uh, speak to each heart lord give us the courage this week to live a way that that uh, we can overcome fear with your plan with your words and your power we pray in jesus name amen thanks for visiting find us at www.islandbaptistchurch.org